The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Mike Rick of the New York Rangers. You're watching Sports Figures. The crowd goes crazy! Excuse me, are you Larry LaRue? Depends on who's asking. Oh, Paul, how are you? Oh, look at you. You look fantastic. So good to see you. When we said that you were coming to skate here, ticket sales went through the roof. I mean, they love you. Well, I'm always happy to help out with a good cause. Oh, and let me tell you, these poor little sick children, they do appreciate it. They I really thought do. it was for Save the Whales. Oh, yeah, uh, whale children. That's what I meant. Little, small whales, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to go warm up. Ah, Paul. There's one small minor problem. You see, we had a little breakdown with the freezer equipment last night. So the ice is a little softer than... Uh, I wish I could say that. Basically, it's non-existent. There is no ice. What do you mean? There is, however, some lovely, nice, hard concrete. I like to think of that as almost ice. <laughs> I mean, this isn't roller skating, all right? I have to have ice to skate on. I no. can't skate on concrete. Sure you can. Sure, not Larry, don't, let, Larry. don't be Mr. Negativity No, Larry, now. there's no skating. This is show business, and the show must go on. Now, look, Paul, this is me. This is Larry LaRue. Yeah. Come on, you. will you try it for me? Do, do it right, for those I'll, baby seals, right, I'll, huh? I'll try. I'll try. Uh, the little seals. Think of them. Okay. Yeah, sure. It's right over there. The ring's right over there. You go straight in. Perfect. Beautiful. You warm up. I got some business to take care of. Charity Ice Show, only there's no ice. Jay, I can't skate without ice. Did you know the average number of calories it takes to melt an ice cube in your mouth, like this one, is 2.3. Takes some to get the ice out of your mouth, too. So what is it about ice that makes it so special? Why couldn't we skate on any hard, smooth surface? Well, let's join Harvard Cum Laude graduate and 1992 Olympic silver medalist Paul Wiley with sports figures Greg Abbey to get an edge on why ice is so cool. Meanwhile, I'm going to have to melt about 100 of these things to work off the cake I have for lunch. Everything you've seen on this show has been wrong. Wrong, wrong. Well, except for that bit about calories melting ice. An ice skater. Look, my no hands. An ice skater doesn't skate on ice. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Good. Good. I got a. I got a question for you guys. Uh, what does an ice skater skate on? Ice. Wrong. Ice. Listen to me, you're wrong. Ice. Ice. Oh, what does that mean? That means wrong, the wrong answer. That's right. Ice. Thanks for playing, but guess what? You're wrong. An ice skater actually skates on this, water. Now, you may think I'm being a wise guy because ice is just frozen water, but I'm not. Ice skating only works when we skate on water. I'm not kidding you about this. When you ice skate, you really do skate on water. Why, you ask? The reason is because frozen water has a unique physical characteristic. Ice does something that no other solid does, and I can prove what I'm talking about with this. Now, this is going to take a few minutes for it to do its thing. So I'll come back a little later.
To help us take a look at ice today, we've asked Paul Wiley to join us. There he is now. Hey, Paul. Hey, Greg. How's it going? Good. 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 Listen, I got a question for you. Can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about ice? Well, sure. You know, if it's too hard, too cold, it's just chippy, and we don't like it. If it's too soft, it gets all mushy. So uh -huh. we like Goldilocks ice. You know, just right. Just right. And do you uh, do you ever skate on any other surfaces? I mean, like concrete. <laughs> sure, like concrete. No, I really think I'll stick to ice. Right? He'll stick to ice. Ice. Well, folks, I tell you, if it's good enough for Paul Wiley, it's good enough for me. Okay, so let's take a look at what makes ice so unique. What uh, what can you guys tell me about ice? Well, it's cold. And it's hard. And it melts. It comes in different flavors. Yes, yes, this is all very true and slightly amusing, but it's not really what makes ice unique. This can is cold. It just came out of the refrigerator. It's hard, and at the right temperature, it'll melt. And it also comes in different flavors, so, so why can't we skate on a soda can? It's too small. But even if we covered the skating rink in aluminum, we still couldn't skate on it. When aluminum is heated and melted, it expands. And when it's poured and allowed to cool, it turns into a solid, just like ice. When aluminum changes to a solid, it contracts to get smaller. Well, nearly all substances expand when heated and contract when cooled. Now that makes sense, right? I mean, when something cools, it contracts. The molecules get closer together, and therefore it's denser, harder than when it was a liquid. <laughs> now let's, uh, let's take a look at what water does when it becomes uh, a solid. Ice. OK, let's pretend these gals are water molecules. And right now, they're about at room temperature. They're liquid. Now, at room temperature, water molecules are moving around well, sort of like this, with all this space between them. But as we cool them, their movement begins to slow, and they get closer and closer together, sort of like, sort of like they're trying to keep warm. And as they approach freezing, they get really, really dense. But water, as it turns to a solid, does something that no other substance does. It expands. In an ice crystal, there are empty spaces between the molecules, well, sort of like this. Water, just before it freezes, is actually more dense than ice on a molecular level. Now, because ice is less dense than water, it floats. How you doing? Great, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I'll, have a, uh, I'll have a water and uh, water and water on the rock. Please. Sure. Great. Now, ice floats because in its solid state, water is less dense than water. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, it's very good. Here's an uh, important safety tip for you. Because water expands when it freezes, uh, pipes in, a, in an unheated house, they could burst. Excuse me. Expansion is also what causes potholes in the street. You see, water seeps down into a crack, it freezes and expands and tears the pavement apart. So, needless to say. Okay, I guess that's a cut. Okay. Cut! Well, you're probably asking yourself, what does any of this have to do with ice skating? Hey, Greg, what does any of this have to do with ice skating? Paul, it's a very good question. I'm glad you asked it. Now, try to stay with me. Ice is less dense as a solid, right? It expands. Right. And when you skate, you're exerting pressure on the ice with your skate blade, right? Right. Now, the pressure is compressing the ice. It makes it more dense. And Paul Wiley, what is more dense than ice? Water. Exactly. When you're compressing the ice under your ice blade, it makes it more dense, so it turns back to water. No way. Yes way. So, do you remember our block of ice? Well, look what happened. Just the weight, the pressure from the wire melted the ice. No heat, no friction, nothing but pressure. And it's the same thing with an ice skate blade. When you're standing on the skate, all of your weight is concentrated on the thin edge of the blade. Right. 
And that's why skaters like their blade nice and sharp. Not because it cuts into the ice, but because it concentrates their weight in a tiny, thin area. The pressure of the blade on the ice makes the ice change back to water just under the blade. That thin film of water is really what you're skating on. The water lubricates the path of the skate, and the skate glides along it. But how come you don't leave a path of water behind you when you skate? The ice melts as the skate blade passes over it, and as soon as the pressure's off, it refreezes. Thank you. So that's why you don't really skate on ice. You skate on water. You know, come to think of it, I think they ought to change the name to um, water skating. Yeah. Hey, uh, Paul. Yeah. Did you uh, did you know if you went someplace really really cold, like say, um, oh I don't know, the Arctic, that you'd probably have a lot of trouble skating on the ice? Because it's too hard, right? Right, right. That's part of it. But if the ice is too cold, your weight, your body weight, well, it wouldn't be enough pressure to uh, to uh, make it melt. Really? Yeah. Hold it, hold it. That's got it, please. The ice man. So why bother knowing about ice and how it works? Well, here's somebody who has a pretty cool job just because he knows about ice. He's the ice man here. So, Daryl, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Zamboni and what it does for the skating rink? Well, the Zamboni has an extremely sharp blade on it, and it lays a tank of hot water behind it. it makes it nice and smooth again. Uh -huh, I see. And, Daryl, I have one other question for you. Have you, uh, have you ever seen the play the Ice Man cometh? No. I think there's a part in there for you. Okay, try this. Get some really dry, fluffy snow. And we'll make a snowball, right? Okay, well now try squeezing it together really tight, and it makes a snowball. Because when you squeeze it together, the pressure melts the snow enough so it sticks together. Of course, if you live somewhere where they don't have snow, and uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, but uh, I don't think you can do this. And that is why we can't skate on any other material, even if it's hard and smooth and has a similar melting point to ice, because it won't melt when we compress it. That is all. That is why ice is cool. Okay, everybody, let's go. Let's skate. At a one, at a two. Da, 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 da. They're beautiful, aren't they, folks? They're beautiful. Hey! Hey! That's my favorite hat. Get back here, man! Thanks, Greg, and thanks to Paul Wiley, Dave Frau, and the students at the American Hockey and Ice Skating Center for helping us out with Ice is Cool. Just all of them. A jump up bungee style. What's gonna stop you making a pile of yourself when you hit the pavement lyle? Balance forces, brakes on the wheels of a car, they balance. Strings on electric guitars, they balance. Rocket that stops on Mars, it's balance. Balance forces, what makes a building scrape the sky? What makes an eagle fly so high? What makes it all? I'll tell you why. Balance forces, all of the springs in your bed, they balance. Pressure inside your head, it's balanced. Understand what I said, you're balanced. Why, it's balanced forces. Did you get that last part? I think so. You forgot to carry the two. Hey, cut that <laughs> out. Your own paper. Quit cheating. That's it for today on ESPN2 Sports Figures. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. On ESPN2 Sports Figures. Doink. <laughs> well, I guess we won't be needing this anymore. We're done. You want it back? All right. You can have this back now. Thanks for watching. Go! It's over! ESPN2 Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to record and use. Curriculum guides are available to help integrate sports figures into your classroom. For more information, call your local cable system or cable in the classroom at 1 800 743 5355. You can also access Sports Figures lesson plans by connecting to the ESPN Net Sports Zone at the internet address on your screen. 
ESPN2 Sports Figures makes math and physics a ball. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company.